Here is how I made a Godzilla cinematographic scene entirely using visual effects in Blender. I started by making camera tracking on some Paris drone footage. I actually had to push the amount of points around the river at least, so that later I can estimate precisely the positioning of the water. I didn't have time for taking an airplane to Paris, and that's why I purchased the stock footage online. My mission is to get this VFX shot done as soon as possible, because the entire world is in Paris right now for the Olympic Games. There is people swimming in that river right now, so this has to be done as soon as possible. On Google Maps, I calculated the real life distance between the two sides of this river, and then I scaled my scene in Blender accordingly to this distance. In this part of the process, your best friend is real-life scale. Especially if you want to work with physics simulations, the scale matters. I found this amazing Godzilla model online, already rigged, which means ready for animation, basically. I had to scale down the entire rig accordingly to my river, because at this point the river is deciding the scale of the entire scene. However, this video is just a general breakdown explanation of the entire process. But if you want to have a step-by-step, -step, two hours long tutorial, you can either join my Patreon or my YouTube Join membership. I leave the link in the description. Are just great ways for supporting this YouTube channel in order to motivate me to produce more stuff like this. But is also a great way for learning with me more often. However, now it's the blockout part in which I basically place some generic shapes that can help me understand what's gonna happen, where it's gonna happen, where I need the maximum details and stuff. So I placed a mesh plane in the surface of the water, just as a reference for now, and then I made also a very draft version of animation. I'm gonna refine the animation of Godzilla just later, for now I just want to see where it's gonna be. Now comes the simulation part, which is the best. Look, Blender is not a software created specifically for complex physics simulations. But this doesn't mean that we cannot actually make amazing simulation with it. For fluid simulation in particular, I really recommend getting this add-on Flip Fluids that is not free unfortunately, but it helps the user to make amazing water simulation very easily and in a very powerful way. From now on, your best friend is gonna be optimization. So there are a lot of ideas and concepts and things that you can do to basically speed up Blender in both the viewport, the calculations for the physics and the render times. One of these things is by creating a low poly version of your character, of your Godzilla. That's why here I am creating a very ugly proxy mesh of my Godzilla and then I attach it to the same rig that is driving my high poly Godzilla. This proxy mesh low poly is gonna be invisible to the final render but is actually gonna speed up the physics calculations when Godzilla is gonna interact with the water. Working with flip fluid add-on is quite easy. They provide a lot of presets for all the elements that you need for your water simulation and then you decide which objects are gonna be obstacle that interact with your water. In my case, it's gonna be my Godzilla proxy. Speaking of which, basically just activate this function and the add-on is gonna do anything that it needs for correct collisions if you have an animated character. So in this part of the process, I just keep a very low resolution for my fluid, something like 64 or maximum 96, because the bakes are gonna be very fast, like a couple of minutes every time you need to recalculate the entire fluid. Because in this part of the process, we just need to understand what's gonna happen, where are gonna be the general issues that we're gonna face. You know, all these things that we just need to understand quickly without having to wait hours. And especially, what I want to understand is the speed of my fluid. And you can understand this by simply working in low resolution for now. If your fluid looks too much slow or too much fast, you can easily adjust the speed of your fluid in the domain settings. Large scale stuff is supposed to look slow, but make your own tests. Speaking of which, the viewport response, even with a low resolution fluid, is never gonna be real time, so it's difficult to understand how is it going with the speed of your entire scene. I make a lot of viewport render. Like if you go on menu view, viewport render animation is just a very quick way for exporting a video just to understand the speed of your animation. So after a couple of tests in low resolution, I noticed two things. First, I had to adjust the speed of my fluid to a value of 2, and then I noticed immediately that I had an issue. My Godzilla was generating a double tsunami, which I don't want to handle in my final scene, because making a tsunami that invades the entire city and the trees around, it's much more extra work to do. So I simply had to find a way for forcing this fluid to calm down near the borders. Using a latex modifier is a great way for manipulating the final result 
of your simulation. This is a great idea by this guy on YouTube. Check out his YouTube channel. So using the latex modifier, I was able to flatten whatever was going to happen in the borders of my surface of the water. Unfortunately, the latex modifier works perfectly with the surface mesh, but doesn't work with the white water particles. Speaking of which, if you have a solution about that, maybe some geometry nodes, I don't know, I will be happy to hear about it. However, luckily in my specific scene, looking from this particular point of view of my camera, this issue was basically not noticeable. So I simply didn't care. In the next part of the process, I progressively increased the resolution of my fluid. So a resolution of 128 at this point is reasonable because it's still not very slow to compute. And at the same time, it's going to give me an idea that is much closer to what is going to be the final result of my simulation. For example, at this point, I can also refine the animation of Godzilla because I see that we are more or less in a stable point of the process. So I went on animating just to give a little bit of life to this massive creature so that it doesn't look too much static. It's convenient to set up everything that you need before making the final high resolution bake of the fluid. Because after that, Blender is not going to be responsive. You know, prepare everything until you are working in low resolution. So that after the final bake, you just have to render and that's it. For example, I change the color of the water in order to match what I see in my footage. I set up the lights with an HDRI. Changing the power of the HDRI is actually a great way for matching as close as possible the color of the water with your footage. Working with water simulation also requires some specific render settings. Also, potentially you're gonna have a lot of noise in your final renders. I recommend tweaking a little bit the clamping values. It depends on your scene. However, you notice that the borders of my water, my CGI water, are very visible. But for now, I'm simply not caring about that. Later I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Now. I noticed that the fluid tends to be pretty flat and calm. And that's why on top of the surface mesh, I added an ocean modifier that can add a little bit of extra details. It's not a simulation thing. The ocean modifier is just like a pre-made animation of an ocean. You just slap it on top of your simulation, set it on this place, tweak it a little bit, maybe animate a couple of values like I did. The only thing is that in this scene would be very slow. So what I would suggest to you is in a brand new scene, in Blender. Make your ocean modifier thing in there so that you can have a real-time response, you can animate it as you want, and when you are happy you can simply copy these settings in the original scene. Now, white water. White water is actually composed of four elements. The bubbles, the foam, the spray, and the dust. All these four elements can be controlled separately. And you know what? I found out that uh, if I simply turn off the bubbles, we can save a lot of time for either the bake of the physics, the rain times because you basically are avoiding millions of unnecessary particles the bubbles make sense if you are making a scene underwater or maybe if you are making a scene that is very close to the water so you actually see through the water what is happening but in this case i simply turn this off instead i really want to boost more the white water that is visible above the surface and push more the settings of the white water and this way i was finally able to get this huge amount of white water and spray my final fluid simulation bake was done at 500 resolution. However, thanks to all this, I was able to take only 70 GB of this space. Now, only one thing is missing. You clearly see the lines in the borders of the water. So at this point, it's all about mixing and masking. I mean, hiding parts that you don't necessarily want to see or maybe blurring out external parts of your CGI so that they mix better with your footage. What I like to do quite often is to use gradient masks directly in D3D space of Blender so that basically I can mask precisely parts of the entire scene wherever I need. For example, I'm masking Godzilla because I don't want to see Godzilla below the water. I'm masking the part of the river. And you know, you can do this very easily by simply combining together your shader with either a holdout or a transparent shader, depending on what you need, using a gradient texture set on linear for which you set the texture coordinate that follows an object. The object can be a simple empty, for example, and you can basically precisely mask the parts that you need. This is a great way for mixing together CGI with any footage, and I use gradient textures a lot.
In the final result, if you can avoid the motion blur with fluids, it can save you a lot of render times. It depends on the situation, but in this case works great even the post-production motion blur. So thanks to all this optimization that I did, the render times were no more than 20 seconds per frame, with 1000 samples, which is pretty crazy. In post-production, I simply added the motion blur, I made some additional masking for fixing some little minor issues with the white water flying everywhere, a little bit of color correction to match everything better and that's it that's it for this video if you want to support my youtube channel consider joining my patreon or youtube join membership as well i leave you the links in the description see you next time bye